Hello, my name is Karel Král and today I will be presenting the paper Sorting Short Integers. This is joint work with Michal Koutsky. So our problem is sorting. That means given n integers x1, x2 up to xn, each represented in binary by w bits, we are supposed to return them sorted. That means return a permutation of those inputs such that um, they are sorted in non-decreasing order. Or we are supposed to sort them just partially by their k most significant bits. Okay, our model of computation are Boolean circuits. And when I say Boolean circuits, what I really mean are families of Boolean circuits consisting of AND and OR gates of fun in 2 and negations of fun in 1. Um, in our e simple example figure, we have three inputs at the bottom, x1, x2 and x3. That means n is equal to 3. Each input is uh, represented by a single bit in binary and we are using six boolean gates to sort them. That means the size of the circuit is 6. Also note that uh, the depth of the circuit is um, 2. Okay. Most people imagine sorting networks when we are talking about sorting in the terms of circuits. But sorting networks are a bit different and they were defined by Betcher to capture comparison-based sorting in the parallel setting. What do, what do we mean by that? A sorting network consists of inputs running on wires. Those are the horizontal lines. And comparators, which are the vertical lines, which swap always the lower input goes to the top and the larger input goes to the bottom. Uh, in our figure, there is a simple sorting network consisting of three inputs, x, y, and z, and three comparators. The celebrated result of Aitai, Komlosh, and Semeredi from 1983 gives us logarithmic depth sorting networks, where depth is uh, corresponding to the running time of the parallel execution, in other words, depth is the largest number of comparators an input can meet in the sorting network. Also note that um, such networks have uh, n log n comparators, which matches the n log n comparator based sorting lower bound. But sorting networks of ITI Komlosh and Semeredi, when we implement each comparator, by a circuit of size w gives us circuits of size w n log n. And this is rather large for the case where w is much smaller than log n. This was noticed already by Asharov, Lin and Shi in their paper and they gave sorting circuits of size n w squared times a term with iterated logarithms squared. But their depth was uh, relatively large. In a subsequent work, Lin and Shi uh, construct circuits of size nw times polynomial in the iterated logarithm, but logarithmic depth. Our result is uh, completely getting rid of the term with iterated logarithms and having circuits of size just nw squared while preserving polylogarithmic depth of log n plus w log w. Uh, and the results of both Asharov, Lin and Shi and Lin and Shi were actually more general. Uh, they considered partial sorting of n integers, each represented in binary by w bits and sorting them partially 
by their k most significant bits. Again, uh, Itaikomloj Semeredi sorting network gives us same size, but slightly lower depth of log n times log k instead of log w. But uh, Asharov, Lin, and Chi gave circuits of size k and w times a term in the iterated logarithm and in the subsequent paper logarithmic depth. Our result is getting rid of almost um, of, of one term with iterated logarithm, namely instead of the term with iterated logarithm squared, we have it linearly. So we have circuits of size k and w times um, iterated logarithm term while preserving polylogarithmic depth. So just a comparison with other models. In the case of Turing machines, uh, when we have at least two tapes, then Radix sort runs in nw squared time. On the other hand, in the one tape case, unconditional lower bounds date all the way back to Henny. And recently, Peterson in 2008 gave an unconditional lower bound for sorting on one tape Turing machines, which are non-deterministic. On the other hand, sorting in random access machines, Radix sort is relatively easy for small w because it runs in time n plus 2 to the w when w is at most log n, we get linear time. The harder, it seems that the harder, hardest uh, setting is when w is between log n and log n squared, roughly, or log n cubed, where Han and Torab gave their famous n square root of log log n expected time algorithm. When w is large, and here large we mean w is at least log squared n times log log n, Bela Cogui, Brodal and Nielsen in 2014 gave expected linear time algorithm. Okay, so back to our circuits. The basic idea of our nw squared sorting circuit is to first count number of occurrences of each input string consisting of w bits and then decompressing those in the correct order. What do we mean by that? In our figure we have an example with seven inputs x1, x2 uh, up to x7 at the bottom each represented by two bits. We count them, that means um, the string 0, 0 appears just once, the string 1, 0 appears three times. And we decompress those counts in the correct order. This could be viewed as a compression because the input consists of n times w bits, but the middle layer consisting of the counts in binary has 2 to the w times log n bits. When w is small, say log n half, this is already much, much smaller than the size of the input itself. Okay, so how to do the counting part? We could do trivial count. What does it mean? Given n binary strings, we could return the counts how many times each possible binary string appears in our inputs. To do this, for each y, a w bit string, in parallel, we do the following. For each input string with index j, we create an indicator whether y is equal to xj or not. And then uh, 
we just sum those indicators. Please note that the uh, sum of n numbers, each of one bit, can be done by the 3 to 2 trick of Wallace in, uh, by a linear sized circuit. Thus, this gives us a circuit count of size nw times 2 to the w. This is already a huge improvement when w is really, really small. So, how to do the count properly? Now, first we are given n input numbers. Again, those are at the bottom. And we divide them into blocks of consecutive numbers, each block consisting of 2 to the 8w numbers. And we sort each block separately, in parallel, by the circuit of Aitai, Komloš and Semerady. Thus, the n log n becomes 2 to the 8w times log of 2 to the 8w, which is the just w times 2 to the 8w, and thus we get uh, total size of this phase n w squared. because the Aitai Komloš Semerady circuit has size w times the number of inputs times logarithm of the number of inputs. Okay, we have sorted each block. Now we divide each block into parts, each part consisting of 2 to the 2w numbers. And we observe that most parts contain just copies of a single number, of a single binary string of size w. We call them monochromatic. And uh, to be precise, it is easy to observe that at most 2 to the w parts are non-monochromatic, thus the rest 2 to the 6w minus 2 to the w parts have to be monochromatic. And the idea now is to count just a single number from each monochromatic part. But we do not know which parts are monochromatic and which are not. Thus, we use the Aitai Komoš Semerady again to shift the non-monochromatic parts to the right. Um, we do this shift by sorting by a single bit which tells us whether the part is non-monochromatic or not. Thus, in the beginning, the first 2 to the 6w minus 2 to the w parts have to be monochromatic, and the rest are possibly non-monochromatic. Okay, now, now we count. For the definitely monochromatic parts, we know we can count just the first string in each part and multiply the result by 2 to the 2w, the number of inputs in each part. Thus we have n over 2 to the 8w, that's the number of blocks, times 2 to the 6w minus 2 to the w, that's the number of definitely monochromatic parts in each block numbers to count. Just note that multiplying by the size of the part by 2 to the w consists of just appending 2 w zeros. How to count the possibly non-chromatic parts? Well, that's also easy. We count all the strings because there are very few non-monochromatic parts. So, in total, we have number of blocks, n over 2 to the 8w, times the number of possibly non-monochromatic parts in each block, 2 to the w, times 2 to the 2w, which is the number of strings in each part. Finally, we add those two results coordinate-wise, and we have our counting circuit. 
please know that uh, once again the Aitai Komloš Semere Disorting Circuit applied to a block of 238W inputs has size W times log of 238W times 8 to the W so that's uh, W squared and times uh, 2 to the 8W and to get our decompress circuit we essentially mirror the counting circuit. I'm saying essentially because um, in the paper our construction is very similar but a little bit different to save on the depth of our final circuit. Okay, so as I have said already, the sorting part, the sorting of the blocks by the Aitai Komloš Semeredi is the bottleneck. That means whenever we are given a smaller circuit for sorting numbers of log n bits, then we have a smaller circuit for sorting um, numbers represented by very small w's smaller than log n okay that's um, our n w squared circuit how do we do the partial sort well first we will consider a base case of partially sorting by the single most significant bit similarly to the result of asharov et al we use super concentrators and to route the inputs through a fixed graph. That's why we use super concentrators defined by Valiant. A super concentrator is a directed graph G with vertex set V, H set E and two subsets of vertices A and B, both of size N. And uh, to be a super concentrator, there is a necessary condition that for every subset S of, of the set A of inputs, those are the rectangle at the bottom of our figure, and for every set T, the targets of, uh, of the outputs B, there must be uh, size of S pairwise disjoint oriented paths from S to T. That means one path from each vertex of S to some vertex of T. And those paths are pairwise disjoint. Both edge and vertex disjoint. The beautiful result of Valiant, which uh, disproved his conjecture, that superconcentrators would be useful for proving nonlinear lower bounds for circuits. Actually, Valiant himself showed a construction of superconcentrators with linearly many vertices and edges. However, the definition of superconcentrators has existence in it. For all set of sources and targets, there are some disjoint paths. And we do not know necessarily how to find those. Thus, we leverage the result of Pippinger from 1996, which actually gives super concentrators and a way how to com compute the routing in them. Uh, the paper of Pippinger gives us uh, gives. Um, the routing filing procedure using uh, finite automata. However, it is easy to turn this result into circuits of size n log n plus n w. The n log n part is for the route finding, uh, for finding the disjoint paths, and n w is for actual routing of the inputs each of length w bits 
However, this is again relatively large. Thus, we apply this circuit iteratively to exponentially larger and larger blocks of inputs and use the monochromatic block trick to actually come up with a circuit of size nw times a factor in iterated logarithm. And the exponentially larger and larger blocks are the reason why we have the iterated logarithm term. Okay, how do we sort by k bits? Again, similarly to the result of Asharov et al., we leverage sorting by one bit. However, we can find medians rather easily because we can sort all the keys. That means the k most significant bits by our previous uh, circuit. And then we can split by the median of the keys. That means everything with the key less than the median goes to the left, everything with key larger to the median goes to the right and equal to the median goes to the middle. This can be done by four copies of uh, one bit sorting. And again, this gives us a recurrence that to sort n input numbers, each represented in binary by w bits, and to sort them partially by the k most significant bits, we reduce this problem to sorting n half numbers by k bits and n half numbers by k minus 1 bits. Those are the numbers which share the same most significant bit with the median key. Thus, uh, it is enough to sort this half by just the other k minus 1 most significant bits. And in the recurrence, we need four copies of the one bit sorting. This recurrence solves to order of k times the size to sort by one bit, which gives us uh, our result. Okay, let me finish with some open questions. First of all, uh, both our result with sorting and our partial sorting uses the Aitai Komloš Semeredi sorting network. It could use a different network, but uh, both of them use the Aitai Komloš Semeredi network either directly for sorting the blocks or indirectly via the result of Pepinje. So there is a question, is it possible to provide a uniform family? That means there is a Turing machine which given uh, n represented in unary outputs a description of the circuit for sorting. The other open question is, is it possible to improve the ONW squared result? Uh, there have been some conditional lower bounds, conditional on the Lee and Lee network coding conjecture, but in our circuit we give compression and uh, it seems quite unlikely that uh, this problem would be uh, would be connected to the network coding conjecture lower bounds proven by Asharov et al and Ferle et al because Asharov et al use uh, the assumption that w is at least log n. However, for small w, we do not know. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you for your attention. Bye.